It's March 23rd, 2024. We're in Toronto, Canada. And last night, it snowed six inches. So great. However, the bright side is that it's, it's warming up and it's all going to melt away in the next couple of days. Uh, no need to shovel the driveway. I mean, my 22 inch Toro gas snowblower didn't see the light of day this year. So, you know, global warming's not real. Anyways, it's the time of year where I need to start my vegetables indoors, start the seedlings and ready to plant them outside, get ready to plant them outside in seven weeks time. Seven weeks time is May 11th, second week of May. That's approximately when I do want to transplant my vegetables outdoors. What I'm going to do is go through all the steps that I've learned throughout the years on the proper way to start your seeds indoors. I'll give you a few tips and tricks and so on and so forth to get the best out of your seeds. And that's about it. The problem with our house is we're in the middle of the city, which means I don't have two acres of property uh, to plant my vegetables wherever I want. I've got a small space. It's an older area. It's an older neighborhood. So, you know, smaller lots, large trees. I've got a 60 foot, at least 60 foot uh, white oak in my backyard. My neighbors to the south believe in natural landscape. They've got 20, 30 trees growing in their backyard, which means most of the southern exposure on my property is a no go. I don't have much space at all to do my vegetables. I've got a small, yeah, I've got a small spot on the side of the house, the south facing side of the house. The good thing is my next door neighbor, they've got a bungalow. So if I plant this vegetables and the herbs on the southern exposure, this, uh, they will get the six to eight hours of sun that's required. We will trellis the tomatoes. Uh, I'm growing the cherry tomatoes only because they are climbing, uh, as are the cucumbers. Uh, I can't have the Roma tomatoes, the bushes, just because I don't have the space. I want them climbing. I want to trellis them to get the most square footage. Plus, the family likes the cherry tomatoes. Anyways, I'm rambling, I'm rambling, I'm rambling. Um, up next, I'm going to point out maybe six, seven steps on the proper way to start your seeds indoors. And let's get going. That's next here on The Philo Hobbyist. As you can see in the right up here, selecting the right seeds is paramount. I've decided to grow cucumbers, tomatoes. I'm gonna to be planting some parsley, Swiss chard, and some basil. I have peas and beans, which I'll be planting outdoors. In the past, I've tried to grow some parsley. Um, however, I've, I've never really been successful. I read the packet uh, a couple years ago and read that you should be soaking the seeds of parsley overnight. So, lesson learned, read the instructions of the seed packets as to how to sow the seeds. You'll see that I'm I've had about, I don't know, 50 to 100 parsley seeds here, and I'm just gonna cover it with water to soak overnight. I don't plan on planting 50 to 100 parsley plants, but we'll see. We use quite a bit of parsley in the family. I've got nine steps to successful seed starting. I'll put a little blurb up on each step and try to go through them all. On the timing, up. I'm here in Toronto, Canada, and I'd like to plant my seeds, or I'd like to transplant the seedlings outdoors the second-ish week of May, so it's seven weeks from now. So depending on where you live and the region you are in, uh, determine the last frost date and work backwards from there, seven to eight weeks. Use clean containers with drainage holes to prevent water logging. They should be two to three inches deep to promote root development. Okay, seed starting mix. This is one of the two most important items along with lighting. Use a sterile, well-draining seed starting mix rather than garden soil or potting soil. 
Seed starting mixes are light and fluffy, providing good aeration and drainage for young roots. The roots of the plants when they first emerge from the seeds, I mean, they're very delicate and you want them moving around at free will wherever they want to go. You don't want them blocked or inhibited in their movement. So light and fluffy is the way to go here. I am using a seed starting mix. I used potting soil for a number of years, but it, this isn't much more money and uh, actually it's the same price. And if you are starting seeds at home, you keep this stuff around. Okay, lighting is the other item that's important here. I'm gonna touch on this a little bit later on, but briefly here, provide adequate lighting for seedlings to prevent them from becoming leggy. Leggy is, is just as it sounds here, as the seeds sprout, you want nice thick stems here with the leaves, with the first of the leaves. Leggy is when they're very thin, the stems, and they're like and then two, three inches long. Um, this happened to me a number of years ago when I started my seeds by the window. The window just did not emit or the window did not provide adequate amount of sunlight for the seeds. They became very leggy and you just throw them away. Seedlings typically require 12 to 16 hours of light per day for optimal growth. I tried to offer that to my seeds. And I, again, I'll show you where I have my lights. One year I didn't label the tomatoes and I had no idea which tomatoes were which. I had three varieties of many tomatoes that year. So label your containers with the name of the vegetable variety and the date of planting to keep track of your seedlings progress. I do write down the dates and the number of seeds I'm planting on a separate sheet of paper just for record keeping purposes. I don't label them directly in the container with the date, but you know, I'm using popsicle sticks for the variety. I keep my window open quite often. Um, when I don't, I do have a little fan that I keep on 15, 20 minutes a day, just for some air circulation. Not, you know, you don't need to keep it on 24 hours a day, just to move it around a bit, just for the seeds. They want some fresh air, you know what I mean? Most vegetable seeds germinate best at temperatures between 65 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 18 to 24 degrees Celsius. Use a heating mat if needed to maintain optimal soil temperature for germination. I don't use a heating mat. I do have a mini heater in the room, in the workshop, if needed. If it gets a little bit cool, the seed set tend to do fine. You'll see in a little while that I use a spray bottle to add water to the seeds. The last thing you want to do is have a th strong water stream into this fluffy soil mixture. It'll just create a nice deep sinkhole. So keep the starting seed mix constantly moist but not waterlogged. Water gently to avoid displacing seeds or compacting the soil. Consider using a spray bottle, as I just mentioned, or bottom watering method to prevent disturbing seeds. Um, spray bottle's good, guys. Once seedlings have developed true leaves, thin them out to ensure proper spacing and prevent overcrowding. This allows for adequate access to light water and nutrients. Okay, hardening off. I, about one to two weeks before I take mine outside for transplanting, I'll keep them outdoors, starting off with about half an hour a day and building that up to about two hours a day after a week, um, just to get them acclimated to the weather and the temperatures of the outdoors, as well as the sun. The sun outside is much stronger than the lights that I'm providing. Okay, back to the lighting here. Before I, I discuss the actual lights that I use, I wanna just briefly chat about the setup. I've got two sets of four foot fixtures set up in the workshop. These two four foot fixtures I originally got back in my photography hobby days. I was really into photography. I intended on using these lights as side lights for portraits and still photography. They are daylight temperature fluorescent tubes. They're T8 tubes. 
uh, I believe there's 6,500K. I'm adding a wired shelf, if you want to call it that, hanging from the ceiling. Now I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. The wiring is very light and the second reason is I have that laying around it. and you know one of my premises is that you use what you have and not go out and purchase everything. I've got two chains, two small thin link chains hanging from the ceiling and they'll be attached to the four corners of that wire shelf on top of which I will be placing the plastic container which will house the, um, the plants. As the plants grow, I will lower the shelving. I want to maintain approximately eight inches from the light down to the plants. I do have a shower curtain on top of the lights. Um, I may or may not take those off. I use that for diffusing purposes. So to the lights, um, again, I mentioned that they're 6500K. They are daylight. They are not grow lights. Um, the differences, uh, between the 6500k and the actual grow lights that you purchase one of them is these the daylight fixtures or the daylight daylight tubes that I have I purchased that at a big orange store lights with a color temperature of 6500k emit a cool bluish white light that closely resembles natural daylight particularly the light present during the spring and summer months while not specifically designed for plant growth they provide a suitable spectrum which is important for promoting vegetative growth, including leaf development and overall plant vigor. The 6500K lights are readily available and relatively affordable compared to the specialized grow lights. They can be effective for starting seeds indoors by providing sufficient light in the blue spectrum uh, to prevent seedlings from becoming leggy and encourage strong, healthy growth. Grow lights, on the other hand, are specifically designed to mimic the entire spectrum of natural light. Light that plants need for photosynthesis and optimal growth throughout their life cycle. Uh, the grow lights typically emit light across a wider spectrum than the lights that I have here. Reds and sometimes other wavelengths like the green and the far reds. This spectrum is tailored to promote both vegetative growth, such as the lights that I have, and flowering and fruiting, which requires more red light, which I do not have. So in summary, the lights, these lights here, 6500K, are great for the seedlings until their flowering stage, call it, right? When a yeah, wider spectrum is required. So by that time, these plants are outdoors. So if you want to grow your tomatoes, for instance, indoors until they fruit, these aren't the lights for you. If you want to start the seeds and take them out after seven weeks, such as that I'm doing, then these will serve the purpose. I'm adding some perlite here to the top of the seedlings to provide insulation for the seedlings as well as moisture retention. I'd rather use vermiculite as perlite is not as effective uh, in both water retention and insulation. However, I had this perlite laying around uh, from the project where I made a forge. What are the differences? Vermiculite is a hydrated magnesium aluminum silicate mineral that undergoes significant expansion when heated. And perlite is an amorphous volcanic glass that is formed when obsidian rock is heated rapidly to a temperature of about 16 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, I read that. Vermiculite appears small, shiny, golden brown or silver flakes of granules and perlite appears as small white porous granules such as you see here. Vermiculite has excellent water retention properties, uh, holding on to moisture and nutrients in the soil and perlite has good drainage properties, allowing excess water to drain away from the roots preventing waterlogged soil and providing good aeration. So, you know, in essence, I should have added some more perlite into the soil mix. However, it already has some, and I should have added the vermiculite to the top. So next year, I'll get some vermiculite. So I don't need to get this under the lights until they germinate. 
but I will put them there just to show you guys. So I'm gonna keep this covered until they germinate and then I'll open it up. I may get a fan just to circulate some air in here. Um, and again, this shelf is a little bit too high, but I'll just get that adjusted. So what's gonna happen I will be cleaning up. This will sit here. Underneath the lights, it is too way too high. Let me adjust that right now, actually. Got these chains as the plants start to grow. I'll lower it from the light. I want to keep it about eight, nine inches. It's a little bit too low at the moment. I'll adjust it later on. Let me actually turn this around. Actually, this is good. It won't slow. So there we have it. Again, when they start to germinate, this lid comes off. Otherwise, we're going to get some mold building up, so I don't want that. Um, thanks for joining. We'll check back in in about seven weeks when I take them outside. I'll show you how I plant them and how I trellis the tomatoes and the cucumbers. That's really important. Uh, it's a great way I'm doing it. Uh, you should catch that. I will link both videos to each other when they go up. Anyways, this is going to go up in a week. So it should be up on this Friday, which is what was it, 23rd today, the 29th. Good Friday. We should see this video. Until, until then, talk to you later guys, thank you. Thanks for joining, give a thumbs up, please click subscribe. Early on in my YouTube career, I need all the help.